people, welcome back to another episode of Reptile Weekly with your host, Muff and Mike. Uh, Muff Daddy couldn't be here, so today he is on location at his home. Um, first, let's start off with <clears throat> this uh, Bill S307. Um, the update is that it passes the Senate. The S307 regulate ownership and use of certain reptiles written by herpers for herpers has just passed the North Carolina Senate and is headed for the House of Representatives. Um, the U.S. ARC sponsored legislation was authored in partnership with the North Carolina Park, which is Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, and had input from the North Carolina Zoo. North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, North Carolina uh, Veterinary and Medical Association, North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission, the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Private Citizens, Wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> it was supported by the North Carolina animal agriculture community. It maintains the right of responsible reptile keepers to work with certain reptiles, while setting practical standards for secure uh, caging, safety protocols, transport, and anti-release provisions and escape recovery plans. It also sets uh, penalties for negligence and other violations of protocol. Simple and straightforward and pragmatic. It is a model for state legislation around the country, and only five of the big constrictors, um, venomous and crocodilians, are affected by this bill. Large constrictors meaning the retics, the Burmese pythons, the African rock pythons, um, anacondas, which is the green, and any other mutations of the anacondas, and the scrub pythons, um, if I remember correctly. Um, this bill is not a ban bill of any sort. Um, this is just basically um, about the housing and the secure housing and the transporting of your rep you know these reptiles. Um, I think it's good. Um, I support it after doing a lot of research on it. I support this and I think uh, it could actually come out to um, help the reptile community more than um, and a lot of other things lately, I think this bill right here is pretty good. With that being said, let's head on over to Muff Daddy. Thank you for joining us today on Reptile News Weekly. I'm your host, Muff Daddy. And this week's story is about snake trafficking. No, no, I'm not Muff Daddy, I swear! These are the glasses! Ah! I cry at night! Teach you to impersonate me. <clears throat> Hit it, boys. <sighs> Armed geologue drug dealers have developed a trade in illegal snakes to supplement their income, according to authorities. The state leading wildlife investigator said police raids on properties involved in the snake trade also uncovered drugs, unlicensed firearms, and other prohibited weapons. The state's leading wildlife investigator said police raids properties involved, uh, oops, I already read that. Senior investigators Keith Lerner and Norlene Courier, Lara, Breakwater, and Whitington had the state's highest rates of wildlife trafficking during an ongoing operation over the past eight years. The sting had uncovered corn snakes as a preferred species of geolog traffickers, Mr. Lerner said. Department of Substantiality and Environment had sea snakes from about half a dozen Geelong residents in the past few months. Mr. Lerner said raiders involved police to issue search warrants had found a correlation between the illegal snakes and other serious crimes. Mr. Lerner said authorities had linked drug possession, mainly cannabis or marijuana, or pills to 38% of illegal corn snake cases in the state and to up to 17% of seized unlicensed firearms and prohibited weapons. About 80% of offenders broke the law despite holding licenses to own legal wildlife. Mr. Larner said, Laura perpetrators are among the most careless about the risk of illegal snakes transmitting exotic diseases. Corn snakes native to North America could fetch up to $1,000 each for some colors. Mr. Larner said. Stricter controls on postal parcels had led to a surge in body packing, a practice in which traffickers fix illegal animals to their bodies. 
Mr. Larna said offenders risked 10 years in prison for importation of exotic wildlife and five years for possession with fines up to 110,000 under Commonwealth law. Authorities would take no action against people who phoned 136 or 186 to voluntarily hand in the snakes. Apparently their local tip line. Shout out of the week goes to Corn Snake 102. That's Corn Snake 102. His link will be provided in the description box. Current reptile contests going on uh, will also be provided in the description box. And today's abuse or not abuse video is a video called Lizard Abuse, in which we see a young girl, prefer probably around her mid teenage to uh, later teenage years. Uh, attempting to shake a bearded dragon off her arm. Uh, it is her pet, so you decide whether or not it is abuse or not abuse. Please comment below. Uh, rate and flag if you feel it is necessary. Finally, the reptile of the week is the king snake. Please do some research on this snake and that tomorrow, or next week I should say, we will bring you a more in-depth story about the king snake. So in the meantime, do your research. This is an amazing snake with uh, many different properties. So don't forget to tune in to Muffin Mike Radio every Thursday. And we appreciate you watching. And I will talk to you later. <laughs> wow, folks. Um, remind me not to impersonate Muff Daddy. I think old Heart Attack got kind of jealous there a little bit. Um, but anyways, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this week's Reptile News Weekly. Um, all the descriptions and everything will be right over here. Um, check them out. And with that being said, uh, check out my latest video also by the uh, Steve, you know, Save Steve Irwin's Place. Um, it's something that needs to be done, and I know a lot of people are now just spreading the word about it. And let's help old uh, Terry Irwin out there. Talk to you guys later. Peace.